what is going on everyone welcome back to another swift tutorial in today's video we're going to be learning how to integrate firebase and crashlytics into your app so this has been something that's been requested by quite a few of you so i figured i'd uh get around to it sooner rather than later so if you're not familiar with firebase it's basically this platform that gives you a bunch of products uh, through google like a database, sign in with uh, Google, Facebook, crash reporting, analytics, and uh, the list goes on. It's pretty long. So we're going to talk about and implement how to actually bring it into your project. And here's actually the dashboard uh, for the project we're going to set up. So we have things like analytics reporting in here. We also have crashlytics set up, which basically gives us analytics about crashes and what caused them, as the name implies. And yeah, there's a bunch of things in here, actually. So some interesting background, actually, which a lot of people don't know. Um, Firebase, a big part of it was an acquisition Google made of a company called Fabric. And Fabric had Crashlytics and stuff in it. Fabric was actually made by this guy back at MIT who was building a Facebook competitor when Zuckerberg was building the Facebook. And of course, his project failed, but he pivoted to build Fabric and I think he sold it to Twitter originally for some something like 200 million, and then Google bought it thereafter. So I think it's pretty interesting background um, of how it kind of came to be. Um, so yeah, that said, make sure you smash that like button down below. If you're new to the channel, hit subscribe. Let's get into it. So let's get started by creating a new project. We are gonna stick with our single view application, and let's call this Fire. Firebase test, save it on our desktop, and let's get into it. So the first thing we actually need to do is bring in the SDK that Google provides for Firebase. And to do that, we're gonna use CocoaPods. So let's open up Terminal, and we wanna CD into the project, do a pod init. And if you're not familiar with CocoaPods, I've got an earlier video on it, or feel free to follow along if you have it installed but let's do an open pod file. And now we wanna bring in two CocoaPods. And the first one is pod Firebase core. And the second one is pod Firebase crash lytics. And let's make these P's lowercase. Close text edit. And in our terminal, let's do a pod install. And we want to see our green success messages. You'll see a bunch of them here, actually. And you'll notice that it's installing uh, way more than two things that we've added in, the, in our text file. And the reason is that these are dependencies that Google has uh, under the hood. So you don't need to worry about them. But if you're curious, that's what all this stuff here is. But anyways, we can close our Xcode project back here with a command W. And we want to now open up the uh, workspace. Let's close my antivirus pop-up. Uh, basically, we want to do a open project name.xc workspace. And the workspace, if you're familiar with CocoaPods, has our pods integrated. Cool. So now we can actually select our simulator of choice, hit command R to build and run. And while that's building, let's open up this folder and go to our app delegate. And we should see our empty app pop up here in just a second, like so. And basically to set up Firebase, you need to, need to add one line of code, but you also more importantly need to register your app on the Firebase console. So let's add that one line of code and register on the console. So you need to add it in to app delegate. So of course, let's first import Firebase. And in this function, uh, application did finish launching before the return, we wanna say Firebase app.configure. So something important to know is once you run this, your app will actually crash. And it'll crash because we need to do some setup work to uh, allow this Firebase SDK to configure itself. So if we just hit command R to build and run again, you'll see once the app launches, we crash. And you'll see all this changes in a second, like so. So let me stop this. And if we look at the console, 
in this termination uh, message, you'll see that it's looking for uh, Google services somewhere in here. Basically, it's looking for a Google services info plist file. And we actually need to bring that file in. And it's provided in the Firebase console once we set it up. So that said, let's head over to our browser and go to firebase.com. And basically on this website, you'll find all the products that Firebase offers, how they do billing and such. But to set this up, this is totally free. So make sure you sign into your Google account, hit this button to get to the console and create a new project. So let me sign into my account and I'll be back in just a second. All right, so once you've signed in and hit create new project, you'll get this screen. We want to first, of course, give this a project name. So let's just say Firebase test. Hit the button to continue. It's going to ask if we want to enable basically Google Analytics under the hood. So just hit continue. And now it wants us to select an account and it gives you a default one. So pick that continue you'll see that it's setting up the project now. So something important to know is that a project is not equivalent to your iOS app. Um, so more specifically, if you have, let's say an Android app and an iOS app, you can have them all under one project. And the reason of course, is let's say you have a database, you don't wanna set that up per application. And Firebase also supports web apps. So if you're working in JavaScript or something like that, um, you're good to go too. So once this is done, we can hit this button to continue. And once you've continued, you'll basically get to the project page for this new project we created, but we still need to add an app. So to add an app, of course, we're gonna hit this button for iOS and it wants some information from us. So the first thing we need to add is a bundle ID. Um, this doesn't have to match your project ID, but it's obviously recommended that it does. So let's actually put in an ID and we will copy this to our Xcode project. You can give this a generic name. This is irrelevant of what the name is shown on the app store for the app. So we'll say some Firebase app and this app ID will leave empty because it's optional. Now we can continue. And this is the most important part. Uh, we need to download this Google info plist file. And this is the file we need to drag into our project as shown here. And this is actually why uh, it was crashing before. So we can hit next. And now it's just gonna basically tell you to bring in the SDK through CocoaPods or something. We've done that already. So we'll just hit next a few times. And now we'll get the spinner because it's waiting for us to drag this file into our project and run the app. And once we run the app, it'll basically communicate with Firebase that we're set up and we can talk to the Google backend. So drag in the file, make sure this top box is checked. And let's also go here and copy or paste in that bundle ID that we provided into the Firebase console. Um, what I recommend folks do is hit Command Shift K to clean your project and then also delete it from the simulator, your app because when we run it, we wanna make sure it's a fresh application. And sometimes um, Firebase takes a second to pick up uh, the connection here. So it could get slightly annoying. So once you've done that, hit Command R to build and run. Give it like maybe 10 seconds, probably less. And once it's built, you'll see it pop up here. Um, it should definitely not be crashing now you'll still see a bunch of logs down here because it just tells you that Firebase is initialized and all that good stuff. But let's see if this is gonna be annoying now and make us do it five times. Um, sometimes what I like to also do, and I don't know if this actually does anything, but I think it's a sanity thing. Um, I'll set a background color in here and then I'll also quit my simulator um, and relaunch it and then hit Command R so basically the app needs to communicate with Firebase and say that it's uh, receiving and sending events and you'll see a green check mark. Oh, look at that. So it actually did it already. I guess it was a little, so there is a little bit of latency, but uh, it looks like our app is working now. So we got this check mark so we can continue back to the console and we basically now have Firebase added. So 
once you've added Firebase, you get a couple of things in here. Well, you get a bunch of things in here, actually. But the thing that I'll call out is under analytics, the dashboard um, is super nifty. So once you ship your app to the App Store, you can see things like daily users and monthly users, their location, um, and a whole slew of statistics. So the next thing we're going to do is set up Crashlytics. And to do that, of course, we're going to go to the Quality tab, and we see Crashlytics is in here. So a quick background of Crashlytics. This was actually built by someone who was building a Facebook competitor at MIT when Mark Zuckerberg was building Facebook. And it basically failed, and then he pivoted to building this company called Fabric, which had Crashlytics, and then Google bought it for a ton of money because, of course, why not? Because Crashlytics is pretty awesome, to be honest. Um, so as the name implies, it shows you really detailed background uh, traces of crashes and what caused them. Um, so it's super popular to use, uh, and it's free, so that's, that's important. <laughs> so we're going to hit this button to basically enable it. And we already brought in the CocoaPod, but if we go to this link here for the docs, you'll see that we want to go to step three to actually initialize um, the SDK or initialize Crashlytics. And what we care about in here is this stuff. So you see there's this pod root thing. And you're, of course, welcome to read through these docs. But what we need to do is hit this button to copy um, this initialization code, and we need to add it into our project. So if we go back to our project, go to the top level navigator, and we want to come up here to these tabs and select build phases. Hit this plus, and we want to add a new run script phase. Open up this new phase that it gave us. And we can delete all this and paste in what we just copied. So now this actually configures under the hood our crashes to be sent up to Firebase. So you don't need to worry about any other integration. Just make sure you have the CocoaPod like we added in the beginning for Crashlytics. And this run script added. Hit Command R. And you are good to go. So now anytime your app will crash, it'll be uploaded to Crashlytics. And it takes a second for the upload to occur. There's some latency, of course. So if you crash right away to test it out, um, and if it doesn't show up here, don't be alarmed. Um, anyways, we can close this tab. And you'll see, actually, we have a check mark here now that we ran the project with that uh, script pasted in here. So we can actually hit this, and you'll see that it'll show us that our app is crash free and there's no crashes or anything in here, but we basically have Crashlytics set up and good to go now. So that about does it for the video. Um, it was quite a bit of stuff, uh, pretty basic also. I'm gonna be doing follow-up videos on a bunch of Firebase things like the database, um, sign in with Google, things like that. Uh, if you haven't done so already, please do hit that like button. It helps out the video and channel quite a bit. Comment if you had any questions. Uh, I always love hearing from you guys. I love hearing your thoughts. I try to reply to every single comment. And most importantly, subscribe if you're new. I'd love to grow this channel as fast as possible, of course. Um, make videos that you guys love and you can learn from. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.